Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We are here to talk about Georgia Gives on Giving Tuesday. And the primary focus of today's webinar training is last minute tips. Today is October 27th. Uh, Giving Tuesday will be here before we know it. We are just over a month away. Uh, so for many organizations that have lots of responsibilities, lots going on, you may not have had as much time as you'd like to yet to really dig in and start planning your Giving Tuesday campaign. And so the point of today's webinar is to really drill down and focus on what are the primary things that your organization needs to do between now and November 30th to really make the most of this Giving Day. So uh, the six easy steps that we're gonna talk through today are also our agenda for today's webinar. First is registration to participate in the Giving Day. Second, we'll focus on getting your profile ready on the website, key steps that you'll wanna take to get that up and running, uh, especially for somebody starting uh, somewhat later in the process, taking advantage of existing resources that are available in the toolkit will be a great way to help make sure you don't waste your own time reinventing the wheel, recreating your own images, et cetera. Focus on the things you need to do to start scheduling your content, get a plan for what happens on the actual giving day itself, and then what does your follow-up plan look like? Lastly, we will have a bonus section today where we talk all about the prizes that are gonna be available for this year's Georgia Gives campaign. There are lots of exciting prizes available to participating organizations. And so we'll walk through what those are, um, who's eligible for what prizes so that you have the information that you need to hopefully build some of that into your strategy for the giving day. So very first step to talk about is registration for the giving day. Hopefully, many of you that are joining today's webinar have already completed this process. But if you have not completed this process, this is the most important first step to take today. So if you go to georgiagives.org, big register now button right at the top of the page, clicking on that will bring you to a short form that you're filling out. That form gives the team at Georgia Center for Nonprofits the information they need to be able to make sure that they're classifying organizations correctly for prizes. So only organizations that fill out that registration form this year are eligible for prizes. So even if you've registered and participated in past years, you must complete the form this year to be eligible for prizes. For any of you that are not sure if maybe somebody else on your team has registered, if you can't remember if you've done it or not, if you go to your organization's dashboard on the Georgia Gives website, so you log into Georgia Gives, click hover on your user menu in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, you'll see your user menu and it will have a place where you can click on your organization's name and get taken to your organization's dashboard. The first screen that you're taken to, the overview screen is your welcome to the platform. You will have an indication on the top of that page that says your organization is registered for Georgia Gives on Giving Tuesday or register now. If you see something that says register now, you are not registered. So great place to double check that you are registered. You can always, of course, contact customer support, but first and quickest option for you would be check in your own uh, dashboard. And if you're not registered, again, that's gonna be the first step I recommend everybody take today. Registration closes October 31st. So there are only a few days left to get your registration form in. It is a very quick and easy form. Uh, won't take you more than a couple of minutes. So make sure you take the time to do that. Step two is getting your profile ready. So, this process may look a tiny bit different if you are a returning organization and you've participated in Georgia Gives in the past versus if you are a brand new organization to Georgia Gives. But either way, whether you've used the platform before or not, there are some essential steps that all organizations should take. The five key things that Mighty Cause and uh, who is the platform that supports uh, Georgia Gives in partnership with GCN recommend that all nonprofits have completed 
on their profile page before participating in a giving day, have a logo, upload a background image, fill out content on your thank you page. This is the page that donors see after they make a donation to your organization on the screen. Your story section on your profile page and setting up direct deposit so that you can receive your funds quickly and easily after the campaign is over. So those are the five key items. Those will live on a to-do list in your profile, in your account, and you'll be encouraged to work through them. If you've participated in past years, you may have all of those complete. That doesn't mean you don't need to do anything to get your profile ready. It means that your job this year is more to review and refresh content rather than start from scratch. So you may have a description in your profile page that you wrote last year, two years ago, maybe even three years ago. It's really important before this year's campaign really kicks off that you review that copy and make sure it's still current. Does it still, is it still relevant for your organization? And, or is there anything you can do to add information about your 2021 campaign in particular? You may have, your logo probably hasn't changed, so you don't, may not need to change anything there, but maybe you want to add a new background image or refresh the new, refresh the imagery within your story so that donors coming to visit your page have a fresh new experience this year. So those are the five essential items. You'll find those on your to-do list. Some additional steps that you can take, set up suggested donation levels for your organization. So when a donor clicks to donate to your organization, they will be presented with suggested donation amounts. You can control what those dollar amounts are and do they have a description? It's really a nice way to continue sort of the story that you're telling for your donors, create tangible impact between the $50 gift that they are considering making and what your overall campaign is trying to achieve. Also, especially important if you have participated in past years, make sure you reset your metrics for the 2021 campaign. And we will talk in just a moment about how to do all of these items in case uh, this is relatively new for you. So first is customizing your profile. So your profile page, again, this is the URL. This is the page that you're gonna share with your donors. So this is the one that you're going to want to customize the look and feel of. You can find it right from your dashboard. It's a top level item on your dashboard labeled organization profile. This is where you add photos, um, perhaps videos, update the copy to tell the story. This is the primary place that donors will land to learn about your organization and choose whether they want to continue down the process and make their gift. There are lots of additional items that you can complete on your profile page, as you'll see here. There are media galleries. You can connect your Instagram account to connect an Instagram gallery. You can add an optional goal bar. There's lots of things that you can do, but the really primary items that you're going to want to make sure that you complete are making sure the logo looks good, that background image, and the description are the three key items that you'll need to complete on your profile. So I just mentioned a moment ago uh, the goal, <clears throat> and we also talked about metrics. So you have the ability to control on your page what metrics are you showing, what is the time frame of which you are calculating those metrics over, and do you have a goal bar? available on your page. So some nonprofits may choose that they don't have a specific goal. You don't wanna call out a specific goal and track towards, but if you do have a goal, this is a really great way to add additional dynamic information to your page. So let's say your goal is to raise $10,000, this Georgia Gives campaign. You can edit your goal, add this section to show on your page. And then as you receive donations, from early giving all the way through uh, Georgia Gives Day itself, that progress bar will be counting forward. Donors, visitors to your page will see that visible proof of the progress that you're making. Uh, you also have the ability, uh, like I said, to choose what metrics you want to display. So by default, 
uh, you'll be showing the amount raised and the number of unique donors given through your page. You can choose just to show one of those uh, if, you, if there's one metric that's particularly important for your organization, or you can choose to show both. And the key thing here is to make sure that you update the start date of these metrics. So you'll see this little screenshot we have here on the far uh, left or right side of the screen, excuse me, uh, the, the bottom radio button says start calculation on a specific date. This is telling the platform when you wanna start calculating your metrics from. So for this year, you're gonna wanna update your metrics to count from 11-1-2021, November 1st. This is the date that early giving begins for Georgia Gives. So if you haven't already penciled in that date on your calendar, make sure to do so ASAP. That is an important date and it's coming up very quickly. Uh, early giving begins soon. So any donations you receive from early giving through Georgia Gives Day all count as a part of this year's campaign. So this is an important step, again, especially if you are a past participating organization to make sure this year's page is up to date. Another thing that all organizations are recommended to do is to preview and update your checkout flow. So I talked a little bit about the suggested donation amounts that you have the ability to add. This example here, there are four suggested donation levels, 500, 100, or 50, 100, 500, and 1,000, but there are no descriptions associated with them. So the best use of this feature is to say $50 equals food for a family of four for a week. $100 equals 10 vaccines to animals in need. Whatever it might be, every organization is going to have a slight variation on what that description looks like. But again, it's a, it's a good opportunity to continue that storytelling so that when donors are on your donation page, they're reinforced about the impact of your work. They're also perhaps encouraged to give at a slightly higher level. So take a look at what levels you've had available in the past. Maybe you can choose to slightly increase the you know, four key donation levels you're offering. Maybe last year you offered a $20 level as the lowest one, and this year you choose 25 or 30 might be the lowest that you recommend. Of course, donors can always choose to enter a custom amount, whatever they'd like. So if a donor wants to give $5, they are absolutely welcome to do that. But you can still use these suggestions to encourage the key levels you'd like uh, donors to get to. You also have the ability to customize other things in the checkout process. You can choose whether you want donors to be able to leave a dedication to your organization. You can choose whether you'd like designations to be available. Perhaps you have a few key programs and you really wanna let your donors select a designation while they're going through the process. Those are optional things. Uh, you don't have to add those, but if they're important to your organization, you can do so. You also have the ability to add a custom question. So if there's a specific thing that you want to ask of your donors when they're making a donation, you can add that to the form. Key thing to keep in mind when it comes to previewing the experience is have you added more steps than are really necessary or helpful? You wanna make sure that you're collecting information that you need, that you will use to really steward your donors not collecting extra unnecessary information that won't be critical uh, and might have the ability to slow your donors down. So all of this can be found under the checkout tab of your dashboard in that very first box labeled donation form is where you can update any of the um, items on the donation form itself. Next is gonna be the thank you page. The thank you page, as I mentioned earlier, this is something that as soon as a donor completes their donation to your organization for Georgia Gives Day, they will see an on-screen message that you have the ability to customize. So it is your immediate first opportunity for that post-gift stewardship. So we see a lot of organizations on the platform that don't take advantage of adding a custom message here on the thank you page, but it's very easy to do and it's a really good immediate step for stewardship. So we definitely encourage all organizations to fill this out. Again, you can find this under the checkout tab of your dashboard under the section thank you page. You'll have an inline editor just like you do on the page. So you can add formatting, you can up, 
You can add links, you can add photos, videos, whatever is helpful um, to tell, tell a unique thank you story. Uh, you can include a message from your executive director. You can include a message from uh, people that are served by your programming, whatever makes sense for the work that you do, but definitely take a few moments to fill something out here. Uh, you uh, can also preview the thank you page as well. So as soon as you've built out what you want, there's a button on this page where you can preview and see exactly what that thank you experience will look like for donors on screen. And the final step of customizing the checkout flow is the receipt. So uh, most of the receipt is standardized and will be pulled from transaction information uh, and uh, universal across the platform because it is an immediate receipt that goes out to donors as soon as they complete their gift. But you have the ability to insert a custom message that goes into that receipt. So again, just like the thank you page is an opportunity for immediate um, post gift stewardship with a donor, this is another place for that. You don't have to take the step of sending tax receipts to your donors because that's handled by the platform. We of course encourage you to send other thank you messages to your donors, but adding a, a couple lines of text here to draw the receipt back again to that same story that you've been telling to your donors about why they should give or why they are giving or the impact that your organization is gonna have. It's again, just sort of continuing that experience for the donor, closing the loop for them that the thing that you told them their gift would impact when they got to your story page was reinforced in the checkout flow when they suggested a certain donation uh, level. And then they're seeing it again in the receipt and that thank you page, making sure that they feel really good and confident about the gift that they have made and the impact that it will be able to have. Lots of opportunities for customization and formatting here as well. And you can send yourself uh, a copy. You can also see a preview right on screen. So important steps again for every nonprofit to take, whether you've participated in the past or not. If you've participated in the past, this might be out of date. Definitely don't wanna have an old a date or an old message in here. And if you're new or you've participated before, but maybe haven't taken these steps, these are really critical things to make sure that you have really previewed, tested out, understood that donation experience start to finish for your donors so that you can feel confident going into this campaign. <clears throat> so that's some of the key items, again, as it relates to your profile page and getting, getting your page on the platform ready. So most of the other things that we're gonna talk about today are what happens off platform. How are you building out your fundraising campaign? How are you scheduling your emails? How are you making your outreach happen to make the most of this campaign? So as I mentioned earlier, especially if you are getting started late, but really for any organization, you wanna take advantage of all the great resources that the Georgia Gives team has prepared for you. Uh, they put a lot of time and energy into preparing resources that will make this campaign easier for participating nonprofits. So take advantage of them. You can access all of these resources right from the Georgia Gives website. You'll see a, the menu uh, item for nonprofits. If you hover over that, you'll see all the items within, FAQs, so answering any of the key questions you might have, nonprofit toolkit. This toolkit has lots of uh, resources, uh, templates, tips, how-tos, planning guides, you name it, lots of stuff on there. Uh, of course, this is another place you can find registration if you didn't from that big button at the top of the page. You can find information on how to contact both the Georgia Gives team as well as the Mighty Cause Help team if you need help uh, and how to access other support resources. If you don't know yet, Mighty Cause has a full library of uh, how-to help articles, walking through pretty much every facet of the platform from how to add a matching grant to um, how to make your page look awesome. So take advantage of those uh, built-in support resources. And then of course, contact us if you have further questions. Two other things to call out in terms of really exciting resources that are available are graphics. Uh, this year, the Georgia Gives team in particular has gone above and beyond preparing 
a whole host of really amazing resource, re graphic resources that you can download and easily customize for your nonprofit. So we've got screenshotted a couple in the slide here, um, but there are really so many options there, really fun logos, uh, fun uh, progress bars, thermometers, all kinds of different things that you can use to make so your social look really awesome, headers for your email, so that you don't have to spend a ton of time building your own graphics. You can take advantage of the work that they have done, all of it in Canva. Uh, so there also is a short walkthrough for how to use Canva, how to access these resources and pop in your logo, for example, pop in your name, pop in your goal amount, whatever it might be. But definitely take advantage of the graphics that they have put together. Uh, and then finally, trainings and uh, webinar recordings. So there have been a series of webinars and trainings that have already happened this year for this campaign. Um, all of those earlier webinars, the recordings are available. And after today's uh, presentation, uh, this recording will be available there as well. So definitely go check out the resources at the a nonprofit section of the Georgia Gives website and take advantage of as many things as you can to save yourself and your team time from creating this from scratch on your own. So the next logical step is starting to schedule content. So I already mentioned November 1st is coming up very quickly. Next Monday is November 1st. That's when this campaign really kicks off with its early giving. So starting next Monday, it makes sense for you to have content happening, uh, posting, emailing, et cetera, all the way through and after November 30th. Now, of course, you want to be thoughtful uh, in how you do schedule that and when you do schedule it. Um, you don't wanna send an email every single day in the month of November, but now is a really good time to think through what is the timing of emails that you wanna send from Monday, early giving, all the way through the end of the event. Do you want to send one email each week? Do you want to send one at the beginning of uh, early giving, one halfway through the month, one the day before uh, giving Tuesday, and then how many the day of? Taking time to think through that schedule will make sure that one, you have your content planned and scheduled ahead of time, but also you can look at the schedule in a big picture way to decide, am I sending too many emails or am I not sending enough emails? I think that's probably one of the biggest questions that we hear from nonprofits participating in Giving Days, especially around Giving Tuesday, when there are lots of nonprofits that are asking for money from their donors at the same time. They don't wanna overwhelm their donors. They don't wanna get lost in the inbox. So it's a really, it's a really important question to ask and to understand about your communication schedule. How many are you sending? Is it enough? Is it too much? So taking the time now to plan out what that schedule looks like, find opportunities of where you can segment so that you're not hitting your entire list every time you send an email perhaps, but what emails are you sending to those that have already given to you this year? What emails are you sending to those that gave to you last year during Georgia Gives? What emails are you sending to your recurring donors or your board members or your super engaged volunteers? Um, look at all of those segments again as you're planning out that schedule and that will help to make sure that you are uh, finding enough balance and really hitting the people uh, that is important to hit with messages that are relevant uh, for them. So <clears throat> aside from email, which is remains really one of the most important ways to be engaging donors. Uh, the next thing that you'll want to plan is your social media content. Again, what does it look like throughout the entire month of November? So social media, there's a little less concern about over posting. Um, and you may not be able to schedule every single day of content. But at the very least, now is a good time to schedule the first two weeks of early giving. Um, and start having a plan for what does your social calendar look like as you get towards the end of November and what are the key things you wanna be focusing on on Giving Tuesday itself. Um, there is a social media guide in the toolkit 
um, shared from givingtuesday.org that has lots of great information, strategy, best practices. So if you're needing help, take a look there. Um, just like with emails, anything you can schedule in advance is great to do. Um, and there's lots of really great tools, Facebook publishing, TweetDeck, et cetera, to get those scheduled ahead of time. And when you do take the time to schedule ahead of time, especially as we get later into the month, your donors get more active and engaged and on Giving Tuesday itself, if you have scheduled content available and already up, it allows time for whoever on your team is going to be taking the lead on social media to be reactive, to focus on conversations that they can have engaging donors when donors are liking, commenting, sharing, et cetera. Uh, they can focus on that aspect of social engagement or those things that are unique, new information, updates that you're having, rather than feeling overwhelmed by the need to post all day on Giving Tuesday because you want to be relevant the entire day. So um, one thing, the last thing kind of I, I always like to mention when it comes to social media is Every nonprofit does not need to be posting on every social media platform for the entire length of early giving and the day of the campaign. Think about what matters to you. Think about where your audience is and where your audience engages with you. And if Instagram is really the place that you have that engagement, you have permission to focus primarily on Instagram. Doesn't mean you may not want to throw a post on Facebook or Twitter every now and then, but you, you know, nonprofits are strapped for time. Um, so focus on the, the channels that are really going to have the highest return for you and the most impact for your organization. So we've talked a lot about kind of early giving and the buildup, but Giving Tuesday is a 24-hour marathon of giving and fundraising. And that can be fun as well as exhausting uh, for everybody involved. And so it's important to take some time to think ahead of time, what does that 24 hours look like? What does that day of Giving Tuesday look like? How are you building your team of people that will support you? And what are those team of people gonna be doing on that day? So key things to um, have on your team of people, social media. We talked about that just a moment ago, but who's gonna be the person leading the charge on social during the day? Again, hopefully they've already got some basic content scheduled and available. But aside from that, what do you want them to focus on during the day? Are they monitoring to um, you know, engage, re retweet, share, like comments, et cetera? Um, or are there specific things you want them to be prepared to post updates on? For example, maybe you have a matching grant and you want them you know, to post when you are halfway there to your matching grant and when you have $1,000 left or something like that. So assigning a person that's going to take the lead on that and then having a general sense of what you want that to look like on the day of. Somebody who will be taking the lead on donor questions. Of course, Mighty Cause has a customer support team that is here to help. Um, we are available by phone and email. So if a donor has a question, they're welcome to contact us, but they may be more comfortable starting to reach out to your organization as a first line. Uh, they know your organization, they're donating to your organization. So make sure that you have somebody on your team that's ready to handle any questions that come in from donors. That would be somebody that hopefully has previewed that checkout flow that we talked about earlier. So if a donor has a question about how to make their gift or how do I answer this question or where do I do this? The, the person answering them is familiar enough with the platform, they can help them navigate or that person is ready with the information about the Mighty Cause customer support team that they can send that donor directly to us for support. Uh, and then lastly, of course, uh, somebody monitoring donations, monitoring your uh, matching grant progress, et cetera. Pull everyone together ahead of time so that everyone knows what they're focused on. Um, and as I mentioned already, it is a marathon day. So think of how you're going to build fun, how you're going to build in uh, opportunities to, to keep the team uh, feeling refreshed, 
when are you bringing in caffeine? When are you bringing in treats, pizza, et cetera? Um, I know that not every organization may have a huge team of people on staff that they can count on. Some may, and that's amazing for those organizations. And I hope they can take advantage of that. For those organizations that are smaller, you can still build out a team of support around you. Look at your volunteers, look at your board members, maybe look at past staff members or uh, longtime donors that are super committed to your work um, and see how you can kind of build out a team with those people. And then what will you do to support that team on the day of the event? When it comes to the actual fundraising uh, goals and aspects during the day of, you'll want to be celebrating those milestones, fundraising milestones. So I've talked a couple times about matching grants. How close are you to reaching your matching grant? Are you halfway there? Thousand dollars left. Have you met your match? Do you have a brand new matching grant that's being unlocked? Have you just met your goal or are you halfway to your goal? Those are the types of milestones that really make sense to celebrate and talk about during the day. Um, prizes. We'll talk more about this in a moment, but there are lots of hours during the day where there are power hours going on. So it doesn't make sense to have dedicated emails going on during every power hour of the day because that would be crazy for you as well as for your donors. But look at the schedule of power hours that are happening during the day and pick a couple that your organization is really gonna commit to, really gonna go towards. And then you can focus your energy around that time. So plan an email to drop right at the beginning of that hour, social media to happen right at the beginning of that hour. And then maybe you wanna go above and beyond that to get a group of volunteers that are ready to make phone calls, send text messages, send emails to their people saying, hey, now is the hour. We have 50 minutes left. Let's get as many donations or as many donors as we can. Uh, and of course, uh, use the hashtag. There will be a social media feed on the georgiagives.org website. Um, so great way to be a part of that conversation to get your posts displaying on that uh, homepage uh, is to be using the hashtag. Um, and the final step of the six key steps is plan to follow up. And this is something that can easily get missed in campaign planning, especially if you are starting the process late, you're feeling like you're very last minute, you're just focused on what does it take to get through the campaign, through the end of it. Um, but the campaign doesn't or should not end at midnight on November 30th. Uh, we talked a little bit about some of the thank you tools built into the platform, but we absolutely encourage you to go far beyond that with your thank you, with your follow-up with donors. So taking the time ahead of time to figure out what do you want that follow-up plan to look like, we'll make sure that that doesn't get dropped in the craziness of what that day is or in the exhaustion that might come in the day after for you and your team. So perhaps you create a threshold, anybody that gives over X amount gets a phone call from our board members. Anybody that is a brand new donor for the first time this year, they get a handwritten letter from our executive director. Uh, whatever it might be, taking the time to understand some of those criteria, how you'll thank and follow up with those specific groups, as well as what does your thank you plan look like overall. So beyond that an immediate thank you, what are the other steps that you're going to take between December 1st and the end of the year? And maybe even beyond the end of the year into early 2022, how do you circle back, close the loop, and make sure that your donors really understand that they made an impact and what you were able to do with their funds. So of course, this kind of gets into year round stewardship um, and we encourage you to have a year round plan for engaging these donors. Um, but it starts with what does the follow-up plan look like after Giving Tuesday? Um, talked a little bit about welcome, uh, uh, new donors in particular. That's a very important um, segment to keep in mind. Uh, so what does your follow-up plan look like for that group of people? Do you have an email welcome series? Uh, do they get a phone call? Do, do they get something in the mail that shares more information about your organization? 
how can you really take that first time donor, bring them into the fold so they've become a regular recurring uh, or retained donor for your organization. So again, really just more of the same, taking the time ahead of time to plan out what do you need to do when it comes to thank yous and follow-ups so that after the campaign is over, when your mind is a little bit fried from Giving Tuesday, you're just following a schedule you've already put in place, not having to think through what do I need to do to say thank you and make sure I don't miss anybody that helped make this campaign a success. So we're through the six tips uh, that were the key things that we wanted to talk about, the key things that all nonprofits should focus on as soon as possible uh, to get their Giving Tuesday campaign ready. But we wanted to close out with a bonus tip about prizes. So um, in the last, I believe, two weeks or so, uh, the Georgia Gifts team announced and posted all the prize opportunities that will be available for this year's Giving Tuesday event. And there are tons of prize opportunities available. So we wanted to make sure we save some time today to walk them, walk you through them, show you what they are and how you can win them, who's eligible, so that you can pick, uh, like I said before, not every single prize for every single organization, but pick the few that you think you really have a chance to go after. And then you can build that into your fundraising strategy. So the first kind of major prize category are leaderboards. Leaderboards are something that will be shown on the Georgia Gives website, uh, most likely on the homepage. These will be counting in real time. So uh, all donations from the start of early giving next Monday, all the way through the end of the day on November 30th, will count towards your leaderboard totals. Um, so all early giving is a boost to your leaderboard totals. And then during the day on Giving Tuesday, you'll be able to track your progress and see where you are, where you stand in the totals. So new this year, there are two different categories of leaderboards available to all participating nonprofits. So the first is a uh, leaderboard for uh, that will award the top three organizations that raise the most dollars during the, the Giving Tuesday campaign. So again, this is open to all participating nonprofits that have registered for Giving Tuesday, uh, Georgia Gives on Giving Tuesday. Um, top three organizations will win these prizes at the end of the 24 hours. And then uh, similar to what's been available in the past, there is also a leaderboard celebrating the organizations that have the most unique donors. Uh, so the top seven organizations that have the most unique donors give to their campaign will receive the prizes listed here. So the exciting news is that this means that this year there are 10 organizations that are likely to win uh, a leaderboard prize, some based on those that have high dollar amounts raised, some that have uh, the most unique individuals that give to their campaign. So um, sponsors are listed here. GCN is sponsoring the dollars raised leaderboard and West Rock is sponsoring the most unique donors leaderboard along with a number of other prizes as well. So uh, first prize category to be aware of is those leaderboards. Again, they'll be available so that you can check your rank. You can check your place on the leaderboard all throughout the 24 hours of Giving Tuesday. Uh, beyond leaderboards, uh, there are also power hours, and these again are open to all registered organizations um, for this year's uh, Giving Tuesday event. So, sorry, just making sure everybody can still see my screen. Okay, great. Um, so, power hours are a really fun way that. Um, that the 24 hours, the marathon of giving gets even more exciting. Uh, it's a long 24 hours uh, as we've talked about before. And so these power hours are a nice opportunity to add excitement to specific hours during the day. So I'm not gonna call out every specific hour here, um, but I wanna call out the key categories of power hours that are available. And I'm gonna direct you all to go to the Georgia Gives website, look at the prizes tab, 
and understand the full schedule of prizes available so that again, you can pick what hours are you going to choose. So most unique donors power hour, $1,000 prize will be awarded between 7 and 7.59 a.m. to the organization that has the most unique donors that give to their organization during that window of time. It'll happen again from 10 to 11 a.m., again from 2 to 3 p.m., et cetera, and so on. So that's why I was talking about earlier, it's helpful to pick one or two perhaps hours that you're really going to focus on and you pull all of your uh, fundraising energy, your campaign communications to target that specific hour. <clears throat> so Westrock is sponsoring $1,000 uh, power hours for these uh, hours listed here. And then Aprio is also sponsoring $500 power hours for the um, hours listed there, 9 to 10, 1 to 2 p.m., 5 to 6 p.m., et cetera. Um, and again, both of these are based on most unique donors. So I think I saw a question had come up in the chat. What is most unique donors? Um, that means a unique donor is a unique individual. So if John Smith is a supporter of your organization. If he comes and makes a donation to your organization three times in the same hour or three times in the same day, he is only one unique donor. Now, what, what is unique, interesting, uh, is these power hours, they only, donors only have to unique, be unique within that hour. So if somebody gives to you from the 7 to the 8 a.m. hour, that same individual comes back and gives again from the 10 to 11 a.m. hour. They are unique for that hour time range. So hopefully that's helpful in understanding, but the clearest way to think about it is one unique individual is a unique donor. So a husband and a wife can be both unique donors for your organization, depending on how they give. So we talked about the first two categories of power hours. There's one more uh, category of power hours, again, open to all registered organizations. $500 power hours, still focusing on most unique donors, sponsored by Marshall Jones. So that's 8 to 9 a.m., 12 to 1 p.m., et cetera. Again, the organization, that hour that has the most unique donors will win that $500 prize. New this year, there is an early giving challenge being added to the prize schedule. Um, and this is to help encourage organizations to really kickstart their campaign, start fundraising even earlier than they may have in the past years. So again, open to all registered organizations. From the week of November 15th to November 21st, there will be three random donations drawn from all donations given in that week. And those three donations will have a $500 boost added to their gift. So all you have to do to be eligible for those prizes is receive at least one donation during that week. So there'll be three donations picked from the week of November 15th and three donations picked from the week of November 22nd. So those last two weeks before Giving Tuesday happens, six different organizations are gonna get a random $500 boost. So everyone is eligible. Definitely make sure that you keep that in mind as you're planning your communications for early giving uh, and make sure that you have at least something going on in one of those two weeks to encourage some of your supporters to be giving early. So all of the prizes we've talked about so far have been open to every participating organization that registers for Georgia Gives on Giving Tuesday. The next couple of prizes that we're gonna talk about here are specific prizes that are open to a subset of eligible participants based on the sponsor of that prize having very specific criteria uh, of, their, um, of who their uh, funds can support. So Primerica, those, these prizes here are going to be open to organizations that are pre-selected by Primerica specifically. Um, and I do believe that the Georgia Gives team will be contacting uh, organizations that are eligible so that you know if you are eligible for this or any of the uh, other specific um, 
uh, restricted uh, prize categories. But for Primerica, there is going to be another extra leaderboard, again, awarding organizations with the most unique donors. So the top five organizations that are in this Primerica category will have the chance to win an additional leaderboard prize. And they also have $500 power hours happening throughout the day. Again, the main criteria, the theme that you're hearing through all of this is about unique donors. Almost all of these prizes are encouraging organizations to get the most unique individuals support them. And so what that means really is any donation amount counts, $5 is great. So while it's up to each organization to determine really what's important for their campaign, um, you may want to focus on some of your larger donors or getting some of your past donors to increase their amount this year. The prizes are really all geared towards participation and getting the most number of individuals to support your organization as possible. So that's the Primerica Community Heroes Prizes. The Arby's Foundation is also sponsoring their own leaderboard uh, ranked by unique donors as well as their own set of power hours. Again, $500 each. Arby's prizes are limited to organizations that are registered for Georgia Gives on Giving Tuesday and working to alleviate childhood hunger. So for those organizations that are eligible for this prize, it's just an additional set of opportunities during the day that you can walk away with more funds for your organization. Gas South. <clears throat> Again, criteria here is organizations uh, that are operating within the cause of human services for children or human rights for children. Again, only organizations that have completed that registration form. They will have five different power hours happening during the day, again, based on unique donors, but the prize is $1,000 here per hour. So really lots of opportunities. Um, happening throughout the day. As I mentioned, I didn't want to read through every single hour because it would be difficult to keep track of that. But if you go to georgiagives.org, click on the prizes tab, you can access all of that information that we just talked through, see what hours there are prizes available, and then you can schedule your plan. So just a couple additional rules and guidelines before I take some questions. I know there are some questions that have popped up First, leaderboards will count all donations, as I mentioned, from early giving on November 1st through November 30th at midnight. So any donations that you receive during early giving count towards putting you ahead in the leaderboards. Also for leaderboards, online donations made through Georgia Gives, the platform, as well as offline donations that you post through your Georgia Gives page will be eligible for leaderboard prizes. Organizations can only win one leaderboard prize total. So I just mentioned at least three or four different leaderboards that are available. Organizations can only win one, which means more organizations have the opportunity to win a leaderboard prize. Just a note uh, that all donations are subject to review post event and before any prizes are awarded, the Georgia Gives team does do a thorough review and verification of donations to make sure that all donations that were counted on the leaderboard are in fact eligible. Uh, so especially when it comes to offline donations that you may be posting, um, it's important to have the backup in, available in case the Georgia Gives team contacts you to ask for more uh, verification on those offline gifts. And as well, check the eligibility criteria for each Leaderboard, the first two I mentioned were open to all registered organizations, and then there were some others that are very specific criteria, so make sure you check the eligibility criteria for the specific one uh, that you might be uh, thinking your organization is eligible for. When it comes to power hours, a uh, couple key differences here. Um, for power hours, only online donations made through the platform count for power hours. So offline donations are not eligible for power hour prizes. They do count on those leaderboards as I was just mentioning, but they are not 
relevant when it comes to power hour prizes. So make sure that you are aware of that. That's online donations only made through the George Gibbs website. So if you get a donation through Facebook, for example, you get a donation through your website, your PayPal button, whatever it might be, those will not count for power hour prizes. Only gifts processed through georgegibbs.org. Organizations are only eligible for one power hour prize per partner. So for example, the Gas South Power Hours, the eligible organizations can only win one of those total. Again, spreading the love between a hopefully as many organizations as possible. And organizations can only win two total. So if you win one Gas South Power Hour and one April Power Hour, you cannot win anymore. So again, the goal here is to make sure as many organizations as possible have the chance to walk away with prizes at the end of the day. Uh, just like um, just like before, donations will be reviewed post-event, uh, and it's important to check the eligibility criteria for each uh, different power hour um, because there are specific ones that have special eligibility requirements. And so with that, we have about 10 minutes left. I know we've got a handful of questions that have come in, so I will work through getting uh, through as many of those questions as I can. Um, for any that we don't get through by 3 p.m., we will follow up uh, after the call with more uh, answers. So let's see. Okay, first question. This is a good question uh, specific to us and one organization, but we know others have this as well. Our organization attempted to register, but it would not let us because our legal address is in South Carolina. Um, this is the case for certain organizations. There is criteria that uh, to participate in Georgia Gives Day, uh, your organization has to have a legal address in the state of Georgia, but we know there are many organizations that might technically have an address elsewhere, but, but the work that you do is in Georgia. In that case, you do have to contact the Mighty Cause support team so that we can create a page for you that has that Georgia address. And once we create a page with that Georgia address, that's how you'll be able to register. So I know we get a couple people with that question. We have added that question to the FAQs on the website as well. Um, but um, hopefully that answers your question. Next question, is there an employer matching option? Uh, so I'm, I'm assuming you mean, uh, will donors see that option on the checkout form uh, to, to add information about you know, whether they have an employer that wants to match their gift? Um, there isn't an option across the platform. If you know that you have specific organizations that have employers that will match their gifts, you could choose to add a question to the checkout form on your own organization's page where you ask organizations to, or you ask donors, excuse me, to enter the name of their employer so that you can follow up post event to see if they have uh, the ability to get that employer to provide a match. Um, next question Do donors have to use the GA Gives website to make donations? So, um, yes and no, depending on um, what your question is really about. For um, to count for prizes, power hours, a donation has to be made through georgiagives.org. If you want to count it for leaderboards, if you want to just count for the total that you display on your page, there is the ability to post offline donations. So if somebody makes a gift through another source, Facebook, your website gives you cash, et cetera, you can still post those offline donations uh, to count in your totals. Um, next question, where is the toolkit? If you go to georgiagives.org and um, there are a number of items in the menu bar, one of those items is gonna be labeled nonprofits. If you click on the label that says nonprofits, there will be a drop-down menu with a handful of items. One of those is gonna be the toolkit, one of those is gonna be the graphics, one is the webinars, etc. cetera. Um, one more question, who owns the donor data? Can we export it for use in our own CRM software? Yes, any donor that makes a donation to your organization is a donor that you can consider uh, for your organization. So we definitely encourage you to export your donor data from the platform and integrate it into whatever CRM system you are using. 
Um, if you do happen to use Salesforce as a CRM that you're using externally, you may want to consider upgrading uh, to the Mighty Cause Advanced Package, which has a direct integration with Salesforce. Um, it's an optional thing. You can choose to do monthly or annually. Um, but if you use Salesforce as your external CRM, that might help streamline the process for you so that it's an automatic integration uh, and not something you have to do post-event. <clears throat> um, Follow-up question on unique donors. To be clear, unique donors includes anyone who donates as one entity. Yes, a unique donor is a unique individual. Um, I think we have a couple more questions um, that have come in through the chat. So I'm just gonna double check to see if we have any um, there. Uh, okay. All right, here's a question. How do you suggest handling the holiday weekend leading up to Giving Tuesday when the office is closed? So I guess it depends what specifically you mean by handling that holiday weekend. Um, but I think that it's best to plan and hopefully schedule some uh, communications to happen while your office is closed. Um, we always encourage um, organizations to send an email perhaps the Monday or Tuesday before Thanksgiving. And the message can be something like, before you head out on Thanksgiving, you know, or before you head out for the holidays this week, take time to make your early gift for Georgia Gives. Um, that way you're kind of encouraging their giving earlier in the week. You may want to schedule another uh, email to happen sometime between Friday and Sunday. Um, you may want to schedule some po social posts, but of course, this is going to be a very busy time uh, for uh, donors and consumers where they're getting bombarded with lots of information. So you may choose that you don't want to compete with a Black Friday email, for example, and you want to instead focus on the Monday when you're back in the office. Again, it will be busy with emails because of Cyber Monday, but at least your team will be uh, on staff to perhaps answer any questions. So I'm not 100% sure if that answers the specific question you had in mind, um, but it is important to think about what, um, you know, what's helpful there. Um, and I see a specific question about somebody's logo. Um, I'll have our support team follow up with you directly uh, because I think that is a, a looks like a issue that you're having with your own logo. So we'll have uh, people reach out to you as well. Um, and then there's one other question. If we are signed up for Georgia Gives, are we also signed up for National Giving Tuesday? Um, not necessarily. Uh, so Georgia Gives is a partner with the National Giving Tuesday movement. Um, and so after the event uh, is over, there's lots of reporting back to the overall Giving Tuesday movement so that givingtuesday.org is aware of where giving was happening across the uh, across the country, across the world. So Georgia is a direct partner in that and there is um, high level information sharing so that um, Georgia Gives is aware of uh, donations um, that have been reported back to givingtuesday.org and vice versa. Um, so I don't exactly know what the question is in particular, um, but it doesn't technically sign you up for the National Giving Tuesday event. Uh, you can always go to givingtuesday.org uh, and make sure that you are specifically registered um, and a part of their email list if you'd like to be getting content and information directly from givingtuesday.org. But Georgia Gives, again, is a partner in that um, global movement. So with that, we are just at three o'clock right now. Thanks everybody for your time. Um, again, this recording will be available on the nonprofit toolkit after today's session and uh, good luck with your Georgia Gifts campaign. Thanks everyone.